Azure Virtual Desktop has been around for a while, so generally everybody should be familiar with the basic benefits, like users accessing AVD from anywhere in the world, and the flexibility of connecting from any device, and centralized management with enhanced security. Now, of course, all this comes at some cost. So at this point, the trick is to still get all of those things that make AVD a great investment while reducing the overall total cost of ownership. Sound impossible? Well, you don't want to miss this one. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Reducing cost begins with understanding your users and their requirements. This ultimately goes in how you create your images and package your applications. Once you've built your environment, we need it to run in the most optimized way possible while still giving your users exactly what they need to be successful. And that's where the sponsor of this video comes in. I did a review on Nerdio Manager a little while ago and everybody seemed to love it. And there were some great questions and feedback. So if you're interested in all in a deeper dive on anything that Nerdio or some other solution offers, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do. And we've got four topics that we're gonna dive into today, how Nerdio Manager can help you save money and get the most out of Azure Virtual Desktop. So let's kick it off with scaling. Now your cost of virtual desktop comes from your user licenses, your virtual machines, the disks on those VMs, and any storage related to FS logics, as well as any networking bandwidth or other appliances like firewalls that you have in your environment. And of course, the sweet spot for Azure Virtual Desktop is to go into those pooled host pools where you can get a lot of user density over personal desktops, where it's a one-to-one -one relationship. But that's not the entire story, because the greater the user density, the bigger the VMs and disks need to be so that you have all the performance that each one of those individual users will need. So here in Nerdio Manager, over on the left, we wanna to go to our dynamic host pools and then select the host pool that you want by clicking on the right to manage your hosts and then click on auto scale. This is where we can change the auto scaling algorithms and there are options here for load balancing. The first one is CPU usage. This is going to look at the processor on the host and across all of the hosts inside your pools. And it's looking for the average low and high CPU threshold to determine if it needs to scale out or scale in. And there's an additional layer of automation that's backing all of this feature up. So today, the native AVD auto scale feature works by powering your VM session hosts on or off. And you can see that ability over here in the scaling logic. But the additional thing is burst capacity. This is where you can have Nerdio provision new session hosts from your current image to meet your demand. Now scaling in is a little bit different here as well. So it will deallocate your burst VMs and then eventually decommission them and also then power down your other session hosts. And here you also get a little more control over not scaling in during certain hours and that way you have less chance of impacting your users. Now the next algorithm here in the dropdown is your active average session. This one lets you specify how many user sessions you will allow in the host pool before bringing on new session hosts. And this will have a lot to do with the size of your session host as well as your user requirements. On the scale inside of things, you can specify how many users on the VM signals that it's time to scale in. And you would generally want that set to a one. That way when the average number of users logged in is less than one, then the VM session host knows nobody is here and it can scale in safely. And with less hosts running in your pool, that's how you reduce your cost. Now the third scaling algorithm is the available sessions. This option allows you to specify how many maximum sessions per host that you want to allow. And that's how really the native load balancing algorithm works. So let's say that we have our session host and each one has two CPU cores and we have our max session set to four. This shows over here that your pool can now support 20 users. This is because there are three hosts in the pool, which covers 12 users. And then we have two burstable hosts, which will cover another eight users, bringing your total capacity to 20 sessions. And now here you can set the minimum number of sessions that you wanna have available at all times. So say that we have Four. And that means that there'll always be one host that's running 24 seven. So if all that stuff makes sense to you, go ahead and click the thumbs up and let me know. So as soon as your first user logs in, then you'll have 
three sessions available and Nerdio will then scale out and bring another host online so you, you can always have four sessions available waiting for users. And that'll just keep happening until you reach total pool capacity that you have set. Now there's one final section here at the bottom and that's for pre-stage hosts. And the logic behind these three scaling algorithms is not checking really every second for all of your changes. So what you can do is have some pre-stage hosts that will be ready to go during the time that you select, like during those morning logon storms. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you can scale your system and manage your environment in whatever way works best for you. But let's switch gears now and think about your disks. You see, a whole nother way to reduce costs is by not having any storage at all. Now, I did a video on stateless virtual desktop a while back using a feature called ephemeral disks, and this feature is supported in Nerdio Manager today. Now, before you start redoing all of your host pools, there are some limitations to consider. First is that not all VM sizes support ephemeral disk. Your VM sizes need to be able to support premium OS disks and have enough disk cache to cover the size of an OS disk. And for all of the ones that you provision out of the Azure Marketplace, those are 127 gigabytes. Now going stateless also means that your VMs can never be deallocated. Uh, excuse me, but won't that mean that all my session hosts are always running and won't that cost more money? Well, actually, no, it doesn't. There are three important things to understand about ephemeral disks in Azure. First is that on a normal VM, the disk has a constant cost with a premium SSD that's 128 gigabytes, which again is the size of all of the OS disks out of the Azure marketplace. That would be roughly $20 a month. Of course, that varies a little between regions. And that's just the basic cost of having the disk exist and take up space in the cloud, even if you never powered on the VM. So how much does an ephemeral disk cost in Azure? Zero. It costs absolutely nothing. And this is because the disk lives on the host system itself. It's not an Azure resource and you won't even find it in the Azure portal. This also means that the disk is directly connected to the host that the VM is running on. So disk performance is much greater. Now, the next thing to understand about these stateless session hosts running on ephemeral disk is that they do not get deallocated ever. They get destroyed. See, using this means you need to think a little bit differently about how you scale, and you'll have to rely a lot more on your automation to be able to provision and deprovision hosts when you scale up or scale down. But just as we saw, this is already baked into Nerdio Manager, so no extra work required. So over in Nerdio, we can go to my host pool section, and I've got a pool specifically for ephemeral VMs. Then we can click back over here and go to Auto Manage. Under the host pool sizing, the base host option is grayed out. And that's because the minimum capacity is the base capacity, because we can only scale by creating or destroying session hosts. And just like before, you will specify the number of hosts that you want running in the pool, and that provisioning and destroying process will be controlled more by your burst capacity. So keep in mind that your stateless session hosts, in order to get the most out of this feature and reduce costs, you'll need to have a good idea of the number of session hosts that you need to support. And you can probably have a higher limit for your burst capacity just to give you a little more wiggle room. And the way that you would do this is you could set your minimum number here to zero and then your burst capacity to however many VMs you need. So for example, on nights and weekends, there really shouldn't be anybody in the environment. So you want your host to spin all the way down to zero so that no VMs exist, you're not paying for any VMs, and you're not paying for any disk, you're saving 100% of your money. So then if somebody logs in at three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, a host will be spun up for them. And when they're done working at 5 a.m. and they log off, Nerdio will detect that and scale in, destroying the host that they were just using. So to be really successful at this, your images need to be kept up to date as much as possible. And also you can lean on things like MSIX app attach for your applications to keep those images even thinner. But let's talk about now your FSLogix profile storage. This is like the second biggest expense in running virtual desktop. And there's two ways that we can save money here. The first is by reducing the size of the profiles themselves. And this all starts, of course, with right sizing your profiles from the beginning, which is not always as easy as it sounds. 
You'd have to know your users and what kind of resources they'll be consuming and their office apps and their other applications like OneDrive, Outlook, Teams, as well as all of those third-party apps and what they need and where do they store their data. So it can be quite complex. And since we all don't have most of that information on a regular basis, are we just stuck? Well, no. There are several best practices that you can follow to help you get started, and I'll link to that at the end of this video. So the way Nerdio can help here is thanks in part to Jim Moyle. He's one of the top guys in the virtual desktop space and used to work at FS Logix way back when. And Jim has written some code that's going to help you by shrinking the white space inside your FS Logix profile disks. And to understand how that helps and what all that means, you need to understand that your profiles grow over time. It's just what they do. The trick is that they never shrink. Now, as you're using your profiles right now, you're adding and deleting files all the time. And when you delete a file, since the profile size doesn't shrink automatically, it leaves behind what we call white space. It's kind of like this. Let's say that you download 10 gigabytes worth of Azure Academy videos. Your profile has now increased by 10 gigabytes in size. Then by accident, you delete them because you'd never delete an Azure Academy video on purpose and you don't actually really reclaim the free space that you just created. You just have 10 gigs of blank space inside your profile. So what Jim's script does is it will clear out that white space and shrink the virtual hard drive itself, which takes up less space on your file share. And when you repeat this process across all of your profile disks, then you need a smaller file share overall, which is where you save the money. And the best part is that the ability to do this and schedule it is baked right here into Nerdio Manager in the scripted actions. And the way that this would work is it will spin up a temporary VM in the background, mount each profile onto that virtual machine, perform the scripted action to remove the white space and shrink the disk, then unmount the disk, and then of course rinse and repeat on all available profiles in the file share. So to be clear, a user profile must be offline in order for this to work. If a user is currently logged in, then the profile will be locked and this is gonna pass that particular disk right on by. So you'd have to catch it in your next cycle. So let me show you how this works. On the left, we wanna click on scripted actions and then click here on the Azure run books. Now in the middle, we wanna find the script called shrink FS Logix profile. And then at the window here at the bottom, you can see the script and all of the input parameters or variables you're gonna to need to kick things off. Now to set these particular variables, we need to go over there on the left under the settings and go to the Nerdio environment. And then over on the right, we have our secure variables. Now you can click show to see any values that are currently here and then just set the value to whatever you need it to be. Once complete with all of that, we go back to scripted actions to the Azure Runbook section, and then we find that shrink FS Logix profile script again. And then you wanna click on the drop down on the right side and choose to either run it now or schedule it to run in the future, which is generally what I would recommend. Then you can run it during your maintenance windows and the users generally won't be on the systems. So you wanna select your subscription at the top to run against. And if you are using Active Directory authentication against your file shares, then you can check that box and it will use the same credentials to run this process. Then at the bottom is where you can set it and forget it with your reoccurrence pattern. For example, setting it to run monthly, Saturday at 1 a.m. or whatever time works for you. That'll go and reduce all the white space possible. And then you can look at your overall file share and see what percentage of capacity you have shrink it down as much as you can. Of course, accounting for some overhead because profiles will still grow as users are using them and you can reduce cost in FS Logix. And for our next topic, let's talk about improving windows so that you can get greater user density. Now user density is where we can stack multiple users on the same Windows virtual machine. And one of the big benefits of Azure Virtual Desktop is we can do this with Windows 10 and now Windows 11 multi-session. So the way that we can improve how Windows itself functions is with optimizations. And this is a tool that was developed by the Virtual Desktop team, which is Robert Smith and Tim Musig, which are a couple of guys inside Microsoft who are experts in a whole bunch of areas who found ways to improve Windows and make it run more efficiently in VDI environments. 
That way each user is consuming less resources so you can stack more users onto the same machine. So you'll need less virtual machine session hosts for the same number of users. Now it's recommended that you apply this tool after you have provisioned your virtual desktop session hosts, because there's some things in here that do not survive the sysprep process today. And there's a whole lot that this tool is actually going to do for you. So I'll save the details because I've got another video on that already, and I'll link to that at the end. And you can run these optimizations directly within Nerdio Manager against your host pools, and this could not possibly be easier. Find the host pool that you want and click over here on the right. Click the Properties button, then select VM Deployment on the left. Turn on the Run Scripted Action when host VM is created. In the box, search for the word Optimizations. Select whichever version of Windows you are using, and Windows 11 can use the 20H2 version. And that's it. Just hit save and close. So when you build any new host into your pool going forward or anything that happens through the auto scale stuff that we looked at earlier, the optimizations will get applied. No muss, no fuss. So those are four ways that Nerdio Manager can help you not only save money, but also save time because it's all baked into the cake. Just check a few boxes and you're good to go. So if this video was a help to you or you learned something new, please do click that thumbs up and consider subscribing at the Azure Academy so we can help you to master the cloud and share this video on social media so everybody can keep on learning. And if you have another topic in Nerdio Manager that you want me to dive deeper on or any other product or service you want me to review, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to keep on learning with some of those things I mentioned a little bit earlier, check out this video on FS Logics and that one up there on the optimizations. Thanks for joining me and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy learning.